Earning Equal Halves, Part 1. Today we will learn what is a half and how are things divided into two equal parts. I have got a sandwich for lunch today. What have you got today, Ayushman? Today I have got one paratha. Why don't we share our food today? Sure, you can have my paratha. Hey, if you give me the whole paratha, what will you eat? Let us share. I meant we divide our food into two equal halves. You give half of your paratha to me, I will give you half of my sandwich. Half means dividing anything into two equal parts, right? Yes, like I have four sandwiches. If we divide four sandwiches into two equal parts, then one part will have two sandwiches. I will keep one part for myself and the other part I will share with you. Now look, I have two sandwiches and you too have two sandwiches. Yes, now I have half of your sandwich. But we could count the sandwiches and find the number of halves. But I have only one paratha. How will we divide it into two halves? This is very easy. We will cut it from the middle. Now look, we made two equal halves of one paratha. Now you eat one part and I will eat one part. This means... Objects can be counted and divide to make a half. Yes. Today my mother has also given me buttermilk in this bottle. How do we divide this into two halves? I also don't know. Why don't we ask madam after finishing our lunch? Okay. Hello madam. Hello Vandana and Ayushman. Tell me what is the matter? Madam, we want to know how to divide objects into halves. There are different ways to divide different objects, Ayushman. First, tell me what object you want to divide. This bottle has buttermilk and we want to divide this into two halves between us. Okay. This buttermilk is a liquid. Liquid is measured in litre or milliliter. Look, it must be written somewhere on this bottle. How many milliliters of buttermilk does it contain? But I cannot see. Show it to me. See, here it says that this bottle has 300 milliliters of buttermilk. We use ml to write milliliter. Half of the 300 ml will be 150 ml. Which means, if we divide the buttermilk in two equal halves, we both will get 150 ml each. Am I correct, madam? You are absolutely correct, Ayushman. But how will we measure 150 ml? See, there are different measuring cups to measure liquid. But we do not have those cups with us right now. Then how will we measure the buttermilk? Look, I have two cups here. A normal size cup is approximately 150 ml. You can pour the buttermilk in both these cups. Okay. Both the cups are completely filled. This means that the buttermilk has been divided into two equal parts. Now we have learned to divide all types of objects into halves. No, you still haven't learned to divide all types of objects into halves. What objects cannot be divided into two equal halves? Tomorrow I will get those objects that you haven't learned to divide into two halves. Only then I will tell you about them. Now you both please go to your class as it's time for your class. Yes, madam, we will come tomorrow. Today we learned... That to divide an object into two halves means to divide it into two equal parts. Some objects can be counted and divided into halves. Like Vandana had four sandwiches, so we counted them and divided them. Some objects are divided on the basis of their size, such as the paratha. 
and liquid is measured in liter or milliliter to be divided into two equal halves. Learning Equal Halves Part 2 Today we will learn how objects are divided into two equal halves using their weight. Come Ayushman and Vandana, I knew you both would definitely come. Madam, have you got those objects that we have not learned to divide into two equal halves? Yes, Aishman, I have got them. Then show them to us, madam. Look, Vandana, I have kept those objects here. What is there in these boxes? Dal and basin. Yes, dal and basin. Tell me, how will you divide dal and basin into two equal parts? We can divide dal into two parts because we can count dal. Okay, please try. I will start counting from this pile of dal. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Mm. This pile is huge. By the time I finish this, it will be late in the evening. This is not the right way to measure dal. This means this is not the way to divide dal into two equal halves. We can neither cut nor count it and unlike the liquid, we cannot measure basin. So how do we divide basin? Just like we use litter to measure liquid, we use gram to measure solid objects. Objects like dal which are not easy to count and objects like basin that cannot be counted are measured in grams. This means after measuring basin in grams, we can divide it into two halves? Yes. If you have 500 gram basin, then you can divide it into 250 grams each. But madam, how do we measure objects in grams? We use a scale and weights to measure in grams. What is a weight, madam? Weights are iron pieces of different grams which are made by taking the accurate measure. Weights come in different measures of 50 grams, 100 grams, 250 grams, 500 grams, 1000 grams etc. Look, the thing you want to measure is kept on one side of the scale and one or more weights depending upon the requirement on the other side. When both sides are in balance, this means that the weight on both sides are equal. When both sides are equal, we calculate the weights added. The weight of the item is the same as the weights added. The weight of this dal is 500 grams. Now to divide this into two equal parts, we will measure 250 grams. For this, we will keep 250 gram weight on one side of the scale and we will keep adding dal on the other side of the scale till both sides of the scale are balanced. Look, now there is 250 gram dal on one side of the scale. In this way, we can divide solid objects into equal halves. I have understood, madam. Some objects have to be measured using weights to divide them. Absolutely right, Pandana. Now it is time for your class, so please go to your class. Today you learned that some objects are divided into half based on their weight. A scale and weights are used to measure the weight of any item. Learning Equal Halves Part 3 Today we will learn things can be divided into half in a number of ways. Hello madam. 
Hello Vandana and Aishman. Today I have got chocolates for both of you. Here you go. Thank you madam. And for me, I have got only one chocolate for both of you. You both divide this chocolate into half. Okay madam, thank you. I will divide this chocolate into half. In how many ways can you divide this chocolate into halves? This chocolate has 6 pieces. This is one way I can divide it into two equal parts. I will break this from the middle. Like this there will be two equal parts. Is there any other way to divide this chocolate in half? Look, Vandana, we can divide this into two equal parts like this. By using this way to divide in two parts, we still have three pieces each. I did not think that we can divide into two equal parts using this way. Then it can also be divided into two equal parts like this. Absolutely right, Vandana. This means that the same thing can be divided into halves in many ways. Yes, look at this paper. It is a rectangular paper and it can also be cut into halves in many ways. You also try to divide it into halves in many ways. This paper can be divided into equal halves in this way. You have divided it into two halves in quite a few ways. Yet there are many more ways by which it can be divided into halves. What are the other ways by which it can be divided into halves? Look, this is also another way. Oh yes, this can be divided into half like this too. We didn't think of this. Similarly, there are more ways in which they can be divided into half. I have understood. This means the paper is measured based on its area. So we can divide it into half in any way. We just have to take care that the two parts are of the same area. Absolutely right, Vandana. Today you learned there can be several ways to divide objects into halves depending on its area. Like Vandana and Ayushman divided the paper into two halves in different ways. Half of half, part one. Today we will learn what is half of half. And how things are divided into four equal parts. What are you doing, Daddy? This time, I am thinking of planting four different crops instead of one in our field. And what are they? Tomato, chili, onion and carrots. Oh, wow! Carrots too! Yes, carrots too! But what are you writing on the paper? This paper shows our field and its measurements. The length of our field is 60 meters and the length of this paper is 60 centimeters. That means 1 meter of the field is taken as 1 centimeter on paper. I am trying to divide our field into 4 equal parts on this paper so that I can plant one crop in one fourth part. What does one-fourth part mean? One-fourth part means one of the four parts of a thing or shape. I didn't understand anything. Do you know what is half? Yes, when a thing is divided into two equal parts, then we say that it is divided into two halves. That means we can say that when a thing is divided into two equal parts, then one part will be Half of that thing. Yes. In the same way, if we divide a thing into four equal parts, then one part is called one-fourth of that thing. Okay, but how do we divide the field into four equal parts? It is very easy. First, we will divide the field into half. And then, we will divide the halves into halves again. Half of half? Yes. 
If we divide the field into half, we will get two halves. If we divide the two halves equally again, the field will be divided into four equal parts. I still don't understand it, Daddy. Come, to divide this field into four equal parts, help me. Then you will understand it better. Okay, let's divide this paper by folding it into half. When we open it, we see that the folding marks has divided the paper into two equal halves. Now measure the distance from this line to the edges on both sides of the paper. By doing this, we came to know that the paper is now divided into two equal parts and each part is 30 centimeters. This paper is now divided into two halves. Yes. Now we need to find the one-fourth part of this paper. For that, we fold the paper in half and we can fold this half-folded paper again. And now we will open the paper completely. Now see. On both the halves of this paper, there are marks. And now, you can measure this too. Okay, I will measure them. One half of this paper is 30 centimeters and half of half is 15 centimeters. Now, this paper is divided into four equal parts. Yes, now look here. This part is half of this paper. When we divided this half into half again, we got this part. Now, this half of half part is called one-fourth part of this paper. Okay, now this paper is divided into four equal parts and each part is one-fourth part of the whole paper. Yes, Vandana. Today, we have learned a part of an object is said to be one-fourth of the object when it is divided into four equal parts. To find one-fourth part of an object, we find half of the half of an object. We can also say that half of half of an object is one-fourth of that object. Half of Half Part 2 Today we will learn in how many ways can an object be divided into four equal parts. What are you doing, Daddy? Yesterday we divided our field into four parts. Now I am trying to divide it in other different Does ways. Does that mean you are going to plant more than four crops? No, I will plant only four we crops. We already distributed our field yesterday for four crops. Then why are you dividing it again today? Look, yesterday we divided in this manner. But the field can be divided into four equal parts in many other ways too. So, I'll try to divide it in different ways. And the way which is well suited, I'll try to plant crop in that manner. I still did not understand. Divide the field in some other ways different from yesterday. Then I will understand. Look, we need to plant one crop in one-fourth part of the field. To find the one-fourth part, first we will divide the field in half. And then we will divide those halves into halves again. Yes. We got these two parts by dividing it into two halves. Yesterday, this one half we had divided in this manner. But, we can divide it from the long side too. Look, to divide it into half, we have to draw a line like this. Now, Vandana, tell me if this part is one-fourth or not. This is also half of half. So, this is also a one-fourth part. That means, this field can be divided into four equal parts in two ways. No, Vandana, not only in two ways. This field can be divided into four equal parts in many ways. First, you have to divide the field into two equal parts in different ways. And then, we will further divide those halves into two equal parts. Okay. 
You have already divided it into half in one way. I can divide it into half in three different ways. Like this, like this and like this. Absolutely correct, Bandana. Now divide these halves further into equal parts in different okay. ways. We have already divided the first one into two halves in two ways. One from the short side and the other from the long side. I can divide it in two more ways. By drawing a line that joins the upper left corner with the lower right corner. And by drawing another line that joins the upper right corner with the lower left corner. Absolutely correct, Vandana. Now, if we observe, these first halves can be divided into four parts in different ways. And we have three more methods that are divided into halves. And these halves can also be divided into equal parts in many ways. Take your time and divide all of them and bring them to me. Then we will decide how we should plant the crops in our field. Okay, Daddy. See, Daddy, I have divided this field into four equal parts in these ways. Tell me, are these all correct? Let me see. Hey, you have divided the field into four equal parts in many ways. But see, some of these look now alike. Now we can choose one method among these for our crops. Yes, tell me, which among these looks good to you? I like this one the best. And I like this one because it is so simple. But we will divide the field whichever way you like. Thank you, Daddy. Today you have learned an object can be divided into four equal parts in many different ways. Vandana divided a square-shaped figure into eight one-fourth parts. You can also take a square-shaped paper and observe the number of ways you can find to divide it into four equal parts. Meaning of half, one-fourth and three-fourth, part one. Today we will learn how half and quarter are written in mathematics. I am not very hungry today. I will eat only a quarter of this paratha. You can eat the rest. Okay, I am taking these three parts. Now I will eat a quarter of this paratha. But how will we find out how much portion of this paratha did you eat? I would say that I ate three quarters of a paratha. This has become very difficult. I think there will be some way of explaining this in mathematics. How is this related to mathematics? Oh, it is related to mathematics. Half, one-fourth, etc. Neha, these all are numbers. Numbers are like one, two, three, etc. Half and quarter are not numbers. Right, Ayushman? I think these two are numbers. Neha, let's ask our teacher after having our lunch. We can then find out for sure. Okay. Hello, Hello ma'am. Hello, Neha and Aishman. Tell me, what do you want to learn today? Madam, we want to know whether half and quarter are also numbers. Can you explain? Yes. Aishman, these two are numbers. But half and quarter are written in words. If these are numbers, then why don't we write them in numbers? They are also written in numbers. Writing in digits also make it easier to add and subtract them. 
How are they written in numbers, madam? I will show you how. Look, this is a rectangle. When it is divided into two equal parts, then one part is called half of this entire shape. Yes, ma'am. But ma'am, how to write it as a number? Very easy. First, we will see how many parts of the whole object are there. There are a total of two parts of this entire rectangle. Yes, and we will draw a line to show it and write two below it. Now tell me, how many of these two parts will be called half? Madam, one of these two parts will be called half. Absolutely right. So, we will put one above this line. What does it mean? It means one out of two parts. But how do we read it? It is read as one half. That is one out of two parts. And how do we write quarter? Exactly like I have written half, you can also write quarter. Let me try. One out of four equal parts of this figure is called quarter. To write this, we will first draw the line of division and then write the total number of parts of the figure in it. There are a total of 4 parts of this figure. Therefore, we will write 4 under the line and 1 out of these 4 will be quarter. So, we will write 1 above the line. That means to write a quarter, we have to write 1 out of 4. You both have given the right answer. Madam, we made four equal parts of the paratha. If I ate one part of them, I can write one-fourth of the paratha. But Neha ate three parts. Then how will she write it? This is also very easy. First, draw the line of division. Write down the total number of parts below the line. That is four. Now write down the number of parts that Neha ate of the paratha above the line. That is 3. So we can say that Neha has eaten 3 fourths of the paratha. 3 over 4 is also called 3 fourth. Well, I ate 1 fourth of the paratha and Neha ate 3 fourth of the paratha. Yes, Aishman. Now you have understood. Now practice it and if you face any problem, then come to me. Okay, okay madam. madam. In this video, we have learned that half, quarter, etc. are also numbers and they can be written in digits. And whenever some part of the entire object is to be shown, then the line of division is used. The total number of parts in which the object is divided is written under the line. And the number of parts out of the total is written above the line. For example, to show half of an object, 1 by 2 is written, which means 1 part out of 2. And 1 by 4 is written for 1 fourth, which means 1 part of 4. Meaning of half, one fourth, and three fourth, part two. In this video, we will learn how half and quarter is added. Neha is very happy today because she has left for a picnic with her mother and father. Neha's mother has brought oranges along with food. Neha thinks how she will be able to eat so many oranges. She asks her mother, What are so many oranges for? Mummy tells her that all these oranges are for three people. For Neha, for Mummy and for Papa. Mummy asks Neha, to divide the oranges among the three people. 
by herself. She tells mother that she will give half of the oranges to father, keep half the oranges for herself and give half of the oranges for her mother. Stop this video and think if the oranges can be divided in half by three people. We have a total of eight oranges. Four oranges is half of eight oranges. Let's give four oranges to Papa and four oranges to Mummy. But hey, what's this? There are no oranges left for Neha. Why did this happen? Adding half the number of oranges twice gives you the full number. So any shape or object can have at most two halves so they can be divided between at the most two people. But Neha's problem has not been solved. How should these oranges be divided? Neha asks her mother. Mummy tells Neha that out of these oranges, she will give half of the oranges to Papa, keep one-fourth oranges with herself and give the remaining oranges to Neha. Can you guess how many oranges will Neha get? To find out how many oranges will Neha get, we first have to find out how many oranges will Mummy and Papa get? That is, we have to add half and quarter of total oranges. Are you ready for this? We have a total of eight oranges. Half of them is four oranges and one-fourth of half is to be calculated. Half of eight oranges is four. Then half of four is two oranges. This means Papa will get four oranges and Mummy will get two oranges. Now let's add these two. The answer is six oranges. This means that six oranges will be given to Neha's Mummy and Papa. Then how many oranges will Neha get? You are absolutely right. Neha will get two oranges. Neha figured out how many oranges would come after adding half oranges and quarter oranges. But if she has to tell how much of the total oranges came in the share of her mother and father, how will she tell? Can you help Neha find out? How much of the total oranges did mummy and papa get? See, we gave papa half of the total oranges. If you divide this half also in half, you will get two quarters. Mummy already has a quarter of the total oranges. It means Mummy and Papa have three quarters. Now Neha is even happier because now she can add half and quarter objects. Neha has learned. Now you can also try. Try to add half and a quarter of a meter and find out how many centimeters will it be. In this video, we have learned how to add half, quarter and three quarters. How to find half, quarter and three quarters of an object. Meaning of half, one fourth, and three fourths, part three. In this video, we will learn how to divide half into half, that is, quarter. Vandana and Ayushman are making some craft. Vandana is falling short of cardboard for her craft. She asks Ayushman a quarter of his cardboard. Let's see if Ayushman is able to give a quarter card to Vandana. Here you are Vandana. I have cut the cardboard for you. Thank you Ayushman. Oh, this is small. I will not be able to complete the craft with this. But it was you who said that you need a quarter of my cardboard.
Yes, I want only a quarter of your cardboard. But it looks smaller than that. No, it is not small. It is one fourth. Quarter means half of half. Do you think that you have made half of half? Yes, Vandana. If you want, you can see it yourself. Oh, it's not a quarter. It is smaller than that. How did you divide this into quarter, Ayushman? Look, one fourth means half of half. So I first measured this cardboard from all the sides. All the sides are thirty-two centimeters. Then I marked half on the top and right sides. That is sixteen centimeters. After that, I marked half of the half. That is eight centimeters. In this way, I came to know that both sides of the quarter of the cardboard would measure eight centimeters. So I cut a piece of cardboard of eight centimeters length and width and gave it to you. But it is wrong, Ayushman. It is half of half. Then how is it wrong? Look, when we divide a shape into four equal parts, one part is called the one fourth of that object. Yes, so this means that if we keep the four quarters on top of the object, then the object should be completely covered. Yes. Now look, if we put four pieces equal to what you have made on this cardboard, then it will not be covered completely. Oh yes, it is not completely covered. This means that this part is not a quarter of this entire cardboard. You just paid attention to cutting the sides in half, while we have to cut the whole figure in half. This means that we must first divide this cardboard into half. For this, mark the half top and bottom sides, and draw a line by joining these marks. Now these two parts are half of this cardboard. Now we will divide one half of these in the same way. Well, now I understand where I have made a mistake. Now I will divide this half into half. For this, I will draw a line by making half on its right and left side. Thus. This part will also be divided into two halves. This means that all the sides of the quarter of this cardboard will be sixteen centimeters, whereas all the sides of the cardboard I had cut are eight centimeters. Now, if we cover four parts equal to this part with sides sixteen centimeters and cover this cardboard, then it will be completely covered. This means it is a quarter of this cardboard. Now I have understood properly. Today we have learned what is the correct way to divide a shape into four equal parts. And if a shape is completely covered using four equal pieces, then that part is one fourth of that whole figure. Equivalent fractions, Part One. Today, you will learn about equivalent fractions. Rayansh and Vandana are playing at Vandana's house today. Mummy brought a chocolate for both of them. I brought a chocolate for both of you. You both should share and eat it. Vandana. You should eat one half portion of it, and Riyanch, you eat two fourths of it. And then give me the chocolate that is left. Mother, why so? Why will Riyanch eat more? Why shouldn't we both eat equal quantity? Why don't you first distribute the chocolate in one half and two fourths parts, and then distribute in the way you said, Vandana? Okay, Auntie. We will distribute and see. 
you kids share then call me i will come to take my share of the chocolate auntie said that you will take one halves of it one halves means one of two equal parts of the chocolate by dividing this chocolate into two equal parts you will get four pieces in each part and you will get one part that is you will get four pieces of this chocolate i will get four pieces of this chocolate now we have to see how many pieces you will get from this chocolate Mummy said that you will get two four parts of this chocolate. That is, if you make four equal parts, you will get two parts. If you make four equal parts of this chocolate, there will be two pieces in each part. Now, when you will receive from two of these four parts, you will get four pieces. What is this? You got four pieces in one half of the chocolate, and I got four pieces in two fourth of the chocolate. Four pieces belong to you, and four pieces to me. This means we both get equal share of the chocolate. Hey, there is nothing left for mummy. I understood that auntie knew that there would be four pieces of chocolate in both one halves and two fourth part for us to eat. so she asked us to distribute chocolate like this that means one halves and two fourths are equal seems like it so tell me how much chocolate do i get mummy there is no piece of chocolate for you and we have also understood that one halves and two fourths are equal riyansh and vandana You should split the chocolate into two halves and four fourths and find out how many pieces of chocolate both of you get. Two halves means both of parts of the two equal parts of this whole chocolate. That means the whole chocolate. Absolutely right, Riyansh. Now Vandana, tell me how much four fourths of this chocolate will be. Four fourths means. four parts out of four equal parts of this chocolate that means it will also be full chocolate absolutely correct this means that two halves and four fourths are equal quantities but these two are different fractions yes what this means is that we can write half of a chocolate in different ways like one halves two fourths three sixths Mummy the numbers written are different in these fractions yet these fractions are showing the same quantity of chocolate what are such fractions called when different fractions show the same quantity of a substance they are called equivalent fractions you will learn them in detail in further classes i got it mummy okay now you two kids play today we learn that Some fractions may be the same even if different numbers are used in fractions. When two fractions represent the same quantity of a substance, they are called equivalent fractions. Hence, different fractions can be used to denote the same quantity. Example: In order to represent half of chocolate, one can write one halves. and also two fourths equivalent fractions part 2 today we will see more examples of equivalent fractions vandana Go get three upon three kilograms of potatoes from the market. Mummy, please tell me in grams how many grams of potatoes are in three upon three kilograms. Vandana, you know about fractions, right? One kilo has thousand grams. So now you find out how many grams will be there in three upon three kilograms, and bring that much of potatoes. Okay, mummy, I will find out and get the potatoes. Let us together find out how many grams of potatoes will be there in three upon three kilograms. Three upon three means three out of three parts. 
that is of a kilogram of potatoes all three parts hey but if after dividing a kilogram of potatoes into three equal parts i keep all the three parts it means that in 3 upon 3 kilograms there will be 1 kilogram of potatoes looks like i need to think once again if i am right assuming i buy a kilogram of potatoes and get total of 6 potatoes now if i divide these potatoes in three parts then there will be two potatoes in each part now if i take all three of these parts then it will be 6 potatoes of 6 this means 1 kilo of potatoes will come in 3 upon 3 kilos now i will tell mummy mummy i have discovered that 3 upon 3 kilograms of potatoes will be 1 kilogram of potatoes well done vandana now go bring the potatoes too i'll go mummy but first i need to know something tell me what do you want to know just like 3 upon 3 kilo has 1 kilo of potatoes i think 2 upon 2 will also have 1 kilo of potatoes because by dividing a kilogram into two equal parts both its parts will be written together as 2 upon 2 yes vandana when there is the same number in the numerator and denominator then it means we are talking about the whole quantity Oh this means that 3 upon 3 and 2 upon 2 are equivalent fractions. Yes Vandana 3 upon 3 and 2 upon 2 are equivalent fractions. Now go and get 3 upon 3 kilograms of potatoes from the market. Okay mummy. Today we learned that 3 upon 3 and 2 upon 2 are equivalent fractions. equivalent fractions part 3 today we will do an activity related to equivalent fractions vandana learned about equivalent fractions yesterday today she is discussing it in order to understand it well yesterday we learned that 1 halves 2 fourths are equivalent fractions to understand this concept well we can draw its explanation like one halves means one of the two equal parts so i will make a rectangle and divide it into two this is one halves of it now in order to find the two fourths of this rectangle first i will divide it into four equal parts Now, two of these four parts will be two fourths of this rectangle. Yes, now I can say that one halves and two fourths are showing the same size, so they are equivalent. Just like this, we also got to know that three upon three and two upon two are equal. We should check the equivalence of these two fractions too, following the same way. For three upon three, I have to divide this rectangle into three equal parts. Now, three of these three parts will represent three upon three. Now, to show the two upon two, I will make two equal parts of this rectangle, and these two parts will show the two upon two. Now, if we look at these two, we will come to know that two upon two and three upon three are equivalent because both are showing same quantities. Now I understand how these two fractions are equivalent. Today we learned how with the help of a rectangle you can check whether the fractions are equivalent or not.